Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome back to the Hand Tool Build. I think this was supposed to be a one-day affair. That was like a year ago now, so we don't talk about it too much. But I am building an acoustic travel guitar style instrument, and I started with a 4x4 mahogany fence post. Uh, last week, we put the sides together, including that absolutely insane bending process where I didn't actually cut through and mitre the sides because I'm insane. Well, there, there were many, many comments uh, complaining about heart attacks and stress, but uh, pretty much my favorite was uh, one person who said something along the lines of, Ben, I watch your videos to relax. This one has got me. Um, <sighs> the opposite of that there. See, I completely fumbled the words and screwed up the delivery and there we go. So I apologize for stressing you guys out last week. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> the neck, the neck is not actually glued in yet. It's just a pressure fit. I have got to, I have got to sort out this area here. Uh, that's too pointy and it's not ideal. I want to put in a, an angle that goes down towards the neck and uh, I'll face that with a piece of obviously the same wood. I'm going to be gluing the back on and uh, we'll be attacking the front as well. Uh, hopefully, well, I'm not going to promise anything this time. Let's just get on with it, shall we? The back. Let's get that gluing up first. Slippery slidey, I probably, probably should have put some salt on this.
that's it. Nice. Alrighty, well, that'll do. That'll do. Trying to get the most glue gone while it's still a little bit wet. And a nice sharp chisel actually is actually probably your best bet. Clamping to do. Yay. No, not more clamping to do. I'm going to actually build the top and figure out what we're doing with that. Let's get a center line. 53, 53 and a half. And there's my zero. I'm procrastinating, I'm avoiding thinking too hard about the top just yet. Two, seven, six. I got the Dremel out, I got it all set up with a, a compass jig for drilling circles, etc. And then I remembered. Let's not do that. What I'm thinking is compass. Hello. Scalpel blade. Compass scalpel. <laughs> Super glue it is. This might not hold for very long, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping it'll be enough. That should be all right. Start out with the inlay. Oh, hold on. Cardboard. Ah, there we go. Damn. Damn, 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 damn. Poop. The concept works. I just need to hold it in a little bit better. So I'm going to line up the point with the edge of the, the end of the compass uh, uh, accurately and use the super glue but this time I'm going to use super glue and sawdust and really pack it in there. On a flat surface, that will work perfectly fine. Well, that worked rather well. Compass scalpel. <laughs> there we 
go. Fine, I'm gonna have to grind this and make this even smaller. It's a power tool. Handheld, 150 grit diamond stone. Yeah, that'll do it. And I'm just making this just a little bit thinner. Cross grain, of course. So with this, I've got several options. Uh, I obviously want to use the same material, and that's, that's a given. I can plane this down so it fits, so it's thinner, and steam bend it into place. I also wanted to, uh, another given is that I'm gonna burn it so that I've got a dark uh, pinstripe or a bit of purfling. Option number two is, uh, is cut out of a flat sawn piece like that, cut curves out and inlay them in. Now that gives us opportunities to have, uh, for example, straight lines where the joints are going all the way around. But it's the third option that actually tickles my fancy today. Uh, what I wanna do is use the end grain. So I'm going to use this tiny little uh, Bridge City HP8 block plane that a friend gave me uh, the other day. And it's got these cool fences on that allow me to thickness accurately. I'm gonna use this to create some long strips of essentially square sections that I'm then gonna pack in after burning them. The only reason why I'm not 100% sure on this is that we also were planning on having purfling around the edge of the guitar and that is gonna have to be long strips. But anyway, for now, let's thickness some strips of wood. Why don't we? And here I am setting the height. So those two pieces are the right height. Obviously including the uh, double layer of masking tape that's holding that up. I'm really excited by this little plane. <laughs> I like this. I like this a lot.
Okay, this is too delicate to burn. I'm gonna stain it. <laughs> there we go. We've got the black spirit-based stain. That'll do its job. I have never made a, a rosette before. Never, not once. Tiny. Chisel, no chisel, no scalpel blade, no nippers, fine saw and a bench hook. That's the tool. Yeah, music on, bye-bye. Literally disappeared. This is a uh, tiny little saw that we set at Crimson Guitars for cutting uh, bridge pin things, essentially, on acoustic guitars. But uh, it is perfect, I think, for this.
So the stain didn't penetrate quite as deep as I'd hoped. But uh, tests with fire just disintegrated something this delicate. So we've got a very... We've got a subtle thing going on here. And that's fine. So the big chisel sits on the top and essentially cuts whatever is poking its head out down to size. The original plans have a bunch of gorgeous, you can see it there, purfling with 15th century, 16th century inspired purfling on here. I don't want to do that. I want to do that, but I don't want to do that. I am uncertain whether I'm going to make some very, very, very thin veneers out of this and make myself a black mahogany black uh, bit of perfume to do all of that work or if I do something else that also happened in the uh, early periods of uh, Baroque instruments and literally just paint those lines on. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching, thank you for hitting like and subscribing and all that stuff and uh, yeah I will look forward to your comments. Please have a fantastic week. Don't forget to check out crimsonguitars.com, dailyguitarraffle.com, which is coming live soon, dorsetguitarmuseum.com, and just there's all sorts of stuff going on. In the end, all of that is there so that I can mess around in my workshop and justify it. Woohoo. See you guys soon. Have a good week. And have a good weekend. This is going live on a Saturday. Wherever you are, whatever day it is, have a good weekend.